welcome to another Marvel Crisis Pro Cool unboxing. So this, get this for a joke, this is probably going to be one of my last unboxing videos for Marvel for a while, because I'm not going to buy any more. Wait for the people to stop laughing, and go. Um, so, let's get into it. So, I picked up this box because Beast is one of the original 90s X-Men heroes for me, and that would somewhat complete my X-Men set. And it doesn't hurt to have Mystique either because I'm getting a few Brotherhood models. I've got uh, Magneto, I've got Juggernaut, Toad, you know, Ro um, Rogue and Gambit. So, yeah, it, it doesn't hurt. So it's a win-win, really. It's a win-win. Plus, they're just lovely models, aren't they? They really are. So, speaking of the models, on the back here, you'll see there's an alternative hand and head for Beast, which we'll get into in a second. And, as per always, there's a bit of a blurb on the back. So it starts with Mystique. So, doesn't give you a great deal of information about Mystique, because she's been around for a very, very long time in the comics. So it basically says, little was known about her early life, early life, although she's claimed to be over a hundred years old. During her life, she has assassinated several significant figures, involved in mutant affairs, but doesn't say much else about her. So, Mystique. Mystique is possibly the mother to Rogue. She's also quite possibly the mother to Nightcrawler. And she's horrible. Yeah, she's worked with X-Men in the past. She's worked with Magneto. But she's always out for number one. She will screw over anybody. So it doesn't matter if it's her own kids, which she's abandoned, and they don't even know if she truly is the mother, if she mentions it at all most of the time in different iterations over the years of the comics. Um, she really doesn't give two hoots. She looks after number one, and that's it. But Mystique, her set of powers basically are espionage, spy work basically, uh, and she can mimic several um, different people, uh, like walking through uh, an army encampment or something like that, she can literally just mimic a person and their voice, mimic another person and their voice and just keep switching between one and the other. She can even do one side of her body, one person, another side, another person. She is an absolute expert at doing that. Um, but she is not a nice lady at all, so it doesn't really matter who she works with, she doesn't care. And so if she abandons her own kids, she's not going to care about other X-Men or mutants or brotherhood or whatever. She is not a nice piece of work. So, next we have Dr. Henry McCoy, who's the founding member of the X-Men. He didn't always look like that, obviously. Some mutant abilities uh, still allow you to look somewhat human. He is the extreme. He is e e exceptionally hairy. And he's blue, so he's not just like a brown, hairy beast. No pun intended. He is quite a bright blue. But he is incredibly, incredibly intelligent. So, he has... Enhanced agility and genius level intellect. McCoy has undergone extensive uh, mutations. I've literally given him a feral bestial appearance, including fangs, claws, and superhuman uh, senses. But he is not feral by any stretch of imagination, unless people like uh, Mr. Sinister get hold of him. Or even Apocalypse. Apocalypse has twisted him before in the past. And he's certainly become a lot more savage. But I do like the look of the model. You can see that he's got a hand. Like a fist. You kids. And he's got a normal head there. All glasses. And a book there. So I'll bring the models onto the painting table. Going the wrong way. Zooming with a camera obviously. We have Mystique here, and the classic 90s get-up, which is definitely what I like. So in the in the films, like X-Men, second X-Men, first class, all that stuff, 
all that good stuff. Um, Last Stand, which apparently was a good film, some might say. Um, she looks pretty much naked, as in she's all blue with her reddish hair. But in the 90s, she had a bit more dignity. She was wearing clothes. But she's not technically naked, I guess. It's just her scales. So, hey-ho. But, Beast looks a bit more complicated because he's standing on a gantry. And you can have the option of him with glasses, which looks more like goggles to me. Bare head. Reading a book or fist shaking. Now, being a massive fan of the 90s, I really want to put this guy upside down. Hang upside down, reading a book like he was in the opening credits of X-Men back in the 90s. Not sure if that's going to work at all, because it looks like uh, his feet are part of that gantry there. So if I can get that to work, that would be amazing. Upside down, reading a book. Um, but that being said, he his bum might be in the air. He might be um, more like a baboon. So I'll see what it looks like. But I'm definitely going with the book. Because I can imagine a beast reading a book in the middle of combat. And as per usual, we have one small base model in the box. You get four. Now, tabletop down. Uh, one of our closest buddies on the channel. It was a local club. And it's even been... On the channel for not only 40k, but for Marvel as well. He didn't know that there was cups and bottles and cans on this sprue. He's not the only person. I'm not shaming him at all. I'm just warning people once you use these bases or cut them off and put them somewhere to keep a base and other models. A lot of people are chucking these away, so really keep holding those. I don't put them on my miniatures too much, but the option's always there. And for the large base, which is Beast, we have an option of two, which is pretty nice. Once again, cans and cups. So you can have bottles, cans and cups, all sorts coming on the sprue. So, and I also recommend uh, printing off some posters and stuff you might get on Google. Shrink them down uh, for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Maybe D uh, Daily Bugles or newspapers. They can just crumple up and put on bases and things like that would be pretty cool. So we'll get into the cards, and let's start with Mystique. So, Mystique, which is otherwise known as Raven Darkholm. So, Darkholm is quite an interesting word. It doesn't really say where she comes from, or um, if her parents had the same abilities. It doesn't mention much about early life at all. But she's always pretty much looked this way in the comics anyway. Not not the films, obviously. She met Xavier, she was just a little girl. But she starts off with five health, so that's five stamina. She's a long move, which is always good. Size two, because after all she's roughly humanoid shape. And she cost three. Her defensive stats are pretty straightforward, pretty standard. Three, three, and three. So three for physical, three for energy, three for mystic. And she has a pistol. Pistol is range 3. It is 4 dice, so it's strength 4, 0 cost. After his attack is resolved, this character gains 1 energy. You just gain 1 energy flat out. But if you manage to get a hit, you unlock rapid fire, which can only happen once. You can't do additional times, does not stack for each attack. After his attack is resolved, this character may make 1 additional pistol attack. But it's got to go against the original target. Which is pretty nice. I get on fairly well with Domino that has the same thing. Not bad. I mean, Domino obviously has got her own tricks as well to add to that. But still. Next we have Espionage. Which is range 2. It's 6 dice. And it costs 3. Before damage is dealt, the target character gains the stun special condition. Which isn't bad. Stun isn't bad. And if you don't know by now, stun is if an effect would cause the character to gain um, more than one power, it only gains one power. So if you do a uh, superpower that you could generate more than one, you only ever gain one. Which is good. It is good. Um, 
And let's not forget, it is six dice. It is only range two though, and I find if she is within range two, you're probably doing something wrong. So next, we'll get into her affiliation. So if she was the leader for the Brotherhood of Mutants, and locks Freedom Force. So Freedom Force, once per turn, after an allied character interacts with an extract objective token, after all effects are resolved, the allied character gains one energy. So if it's an interact, uh, you've got to spend an energy, then all the effects happen, then you gain one energy back, as if you haven't spent it. But remember, you still have to have that one energy initially. Okay. Additionally, allied characters may use the following interactability. Interact, so it still means you're going to uh, spend an energy to do it. Place a token on this objective token. While this token is in play, you are securing the objective token. Remove the token if an enemy character contests this objective token. You may only have one token in play at time as a result of this leadership ability. So it's not too dissimilar for uh, so it's like um, it's not too dissimilar from Jonathan, the Unstoppable for Honey Badger. You basically move up to a objective that you need to secure. You spend an energy. You put down a token, which you put down like a Brotherhood token, and then you could walk away, for example, and that still counts as a model being there, holding that objective, which is pretty nice, until an enemy character comes along and then it just disappears. But you can always bring it back at another time. You can only have one token in play one time, and because it costs you an interact, you do get an energy back, which is pretty nice. It's not bad. It's not bad. So... She is an expert saboteur. So, here's an action. Uh, choose an interactive terrain feature of size 3 or less within range 4 of this character. Enemy characters within range 1 of the terrain feature suffers 2 damage. The terrain feature is destroyed and removed from the battlefield. This superpower can only be used once per turn. It does cost 3, but it's a flat out 2 damage. So they don't row or dodge or anything. So if you've got really, really uh, good characters like Spider-Man, that can dodge pretty well. Um, no, you just auto suffer two damage. Auto two damage is solid. I like that. It's not bad at all. Plus, if Magneto was the leader, you've destroyed a piece of terrain. It helps throw out energy out there as well because Magneto's leadership ability... If you destroy a piece of terrain, let's say it's a size 3, you scatter 3 individual energy tokens to the rest of your team, which is pretty nice. Uh, first of her passive abilities. So, she is a martial artist. She's very kick-ass in the cartoons and the films. Like She throws her legs around people's necks, snapping necks, throwing people around, like scissor kicks, all sorts. So... Very thematic, like most of the Marvel Crisis Protocol cards are. When this character is defending against physical or energy attacks coming from within two, this character adds blanks to the defensive role. It's pretty nice. A shapeshifter. During this character's activation, enemy characters cannot use superpowers or reactive team tactics cards. So, that's not bad. So, if you shot... Uh, let's say Baron Zemo, he's got an interact. Uh, sorry, he's got a reaction. Can't do that against her because it's a superpower. That's pretty, pretty nice. So at least you're a bit safer from those gotcha moments he didn't see coming. And she has stealth. So outside of range 3, cannot be targeted with attacks. Which is a shame because a pistol is 3. So she has to be within the stealth to shoot the pistols. I mean, she could just shoot and then run away, and that's fine. But if she had a four, but then again, that would be a pretty amazing pistol with a range four, right? So that's her on her healthy side. That's not bad. She's got some tech. She's got some tech. So it doesn't look like a lot's changed on the other side. She's still got the same amount of health. She looks a bit draggled in the picture, but still. I think she's pretty good. Not very expensive. We'll get into the cards in a minute, the team tactics cards, but it's got stealth, so you've got to attack her within three. 
you tap her within two, she's adding blanks. So really, if you want to try taking her out, you need to be somewhere within two and three. She's not bad, she's not bad. She can blow stuff up, which is pretty nice. She's got stealth, she's a long mover. She's not a bad leader, to be fair, for Brotherhood. Making you spend less technically energy, because you've got to spend it, but then you get it back for those mission interacts. But then with the secure, you can always put down a Brotherhood token on a secure, which is pretty nice. So all in all, I don't think she's too bad. I don't think she's too bad, but in a minute when I show you Team Tactics cards, you might think she's even better again. Beast. I'll zoom in just a fraction. Beast is Henry McCoy. Um, some people call him Hank sometimes. But he starts off with six stamina. He's a medium movement, which doesn't sound amazingly fast compared to Mystique, but we'll get to that in a minute. He's a size three, it's a bigger base and all that. And he costs three as well to have on your team. For physical defense, two energy, and three Mystic. I was expecting more on the Mystic, I'm not gonna lie. But he has Acrobatic Strike, which is range three. It's five dice, zero energy. After his attack is resolved, this character gains energy equal to the amount of damage dealt. It's not bad, five dice, four zero. And it's range three, which is, I would expect, if it's gonna be five dice, unless there's someone more expensive than a three, it's normally within a range two, but that's not bad. On a wild, however, he has Ambush. After this attack is resolved, place this character within one of the target character. So you could be three away from the target character, smack them, and then leapfrog onto the other side of them, really moving up that board quite fast. Then he has Animalistic Freestyle, which is range two. It's six dice, four energy. After this attack is resolved, the target character gains the bleed special condition. So it's not on a wild, he just gets it. That's pretty nice. I was gonna say, if he had to do it on a wild, I would say four energy is pretty expensive, but he does have a wild. Float like a, before damage is dealt, if the target character is size three or less, push the target character away small. So it's gotta be away, but that's not bad. Knocking people off objectives is always great in this game, but bear in mind it's size three or less, which is most normal sized models in this game. After attack is resolved, this character may advance medium. So once again, yeah, it's range two. It's not as, obviously, a, a, such a good range as Acrobatic Strike, which is a three, but you get to move medium afterwards. So if you knock someone off an objective, and then you want to get to the far end objective, and in a minute, one of your other teammates is going to nab the objective, you just knock somebody off, the options are there, or you can always run away if you really, really need to, if you haven't got much health left. So we have Baser Instincts, the first of his powers. Cost two, choose an interactive terrain feature or enemy character, both size two or less, and within range two, and throw it small. So it's not the best throw. It's a small, it's gotta be within range two, so we're looking at kind of Colossus style throws and it's only size two. So those standard models again, nothing like Wolverine has got Alimantium skeletons, technically a three for example. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. So then we have stars and garters. So after this attack, after this character rolls defense or dodge dice, he may spend up to three energy to use this superpower. For each power spent, this character may reroll one of its defense or dodge dice. So he's a bit more survivable than you think. So I'm thinking him with Cable, Cable's gonna buff him up. Two extra dice on his, let's say he's getting the attack physical, that's six, that's not bad. And you could reroll dice. So he's slightly more survivable than you think, slightly. Okay, so it's disconcerting yet pro <laughs> provocative, can you say it? It's disconcerting, yet provocative. So this is a passive ability. Whenever this character rolls dice, after the effect is resolved, 
his character gains one energy if it rolled at least one skull. So kind of like um, Dr. Octopus is looking for those crits. Yeah, crits are good anyway, but then he gets one additional energy. This guy, even if he rolls badly, he's going to get energy. It's not bad. I prefer if it was on a crit. <laughs> and he's the both, uh, best of both worlds. But hey ho. And he has Wall Crawler. So effectively, he can run up and down buildings all day long without reducing his movement speed. So he has six health on the healthy side and only five on the day side. On the day side, he certainly looks a lot more feral, but he is exactly the same. He looks a bit more like when uh, Apocalypse grabbed hold of him and turned him insane. But yeah. Not a bad card. He has got some movement tech. You think he's only a movement medium. Uh, so you could do the uh, drop within one of somebody after you, the attack is resolved. It's pretty nice. Or you can always move medium after animalistic freestyle. So even if you don't want to kill models, you just want to move further up the board. That's not bad. He's basically a pinball, which is exactly like he was in the comics and the cartoons and the computer games. Leaping around, using his legs to hang off things, and just bouncing around. Not bad. It's not bad. I will give him a go, but it's mainly for me it was collecting. So, some pretty good cards though. Advance R&D, which is always a nice card. Unaffiliated, active. A character may spend up to 5 energy to play this card. Choose a number of allied characters equal to the amount of damage spent. Each chosen character gains one energy. Okay, so if you're a battery and you, you're riddled with energy, start throwing them out. Good stuff. The Books of Truth. Okay. Brotherhood of Mutants. Reactive. When an allied Brotherhood of Mutants character is attacking or defending... At the end of the modified dice step of the attack, before the calculate success or failure step, it may spend two energy to play this card. This character rerolls all of the attack or defense dice, including skull results. The including skulls is really, really good. It only costs two to do, so if you really, really need to get that attack in, they've only got one health left or something, and you've just rolled a load of skulls. Yeah, okay, it's not a bad card. It doesn't fit in my playstyle, but it's still pretty good. What does fit in my playstyle, and this is the reason I would probably play Mystique, is Deception. It's unaffiliated, it's active. Mystique may play this card. Choose an enemy character within range 4 of this character. If there's no other non-dazed enemy characters within range 2 of that chosen character, you may advance the chosen character its speed towards this character. So someone's activated, they got on a, a cube on them or something, you really want that. Bring them closer and then just wail on that person and get that token off, for example. It's always a valid play. Now, I really do like the artwork on this card because it shows a point in time where Mystique was pretending to be rogue and snuggled up to Gambit. And the clue should be there, really, Gambit. She's got a bare hand. She should be sapping your powers. Uh, but no, that is really Mystique. So there's a real nice nod to the cartoons there. And the, uh, the old comic books. So not only did you get two models, you got loads of bases, as you always do. What else do you get loads of in Marvel Christ Sprokel? Tokens. So, you got Brotherhood tokens, Activate tokens, Days tokens, three of... I mean, does that mean that they're that good? They're going to daze three characters a turn? And, of course, a stun as well. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to painting these guys up. Uh, real nice turquoise characters. Really do tickle my hobby pickle. I do like turquoise. Lovely colour. Um, and I do like the 90s feel. So, Beast could look like the comics and the films. Fairly well representative of each. But Mystique definitely is more like the cartoons and the comics for me rather than the films. Um, because she's not knackered. Um, 
but yeah, really looking forward to playing Mystique anyway. Um, and Beast, I will give him a go and see what he does because he could be all over the shop. So if you put him in your 10 man roster and you've got one of those missions that have got like a objective in every quarter or this, this five is one in the middle, he could be anywhere. That's the guy to play, I think. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the like button if you haven't done already. And please, please subscribe for some more great Marvel content. And hopefully we'll see these guys on the table soon. Take care, everyone.